Hello and welcome back to KSP Made Easy. In today's episode, I will teach you how to design, launch, and populate a small, simple space station. We'll start with our space station design and then design some crew orbit transport vehicles to be used to get our crew up to and down from the space station. Let's head on over to the VAB and get ourselves started. For transport up to the space stations that we're going to design, I'm going to design two spacecraft. One is going to be a space plane that uses no parts from the Making History expansion. Uh, this is a great. This is this is the only way at the current tech level that I have in order to transport three Kerbals to and from the space station. And I want to have the ability to transport three Kerbals. This will allow me to bring a pilot, an engineer, and a scientist up. The second one will use mainly parts from the Making History uh, expansion. For the first one, which we'll call Crew Orbit Transport Vehicle One. Once again, it will be a space plane, so we're going to start in the space plane hangar. We'll use a Mark 1 command pod and a small Mark 1 crew cabin to form the crew section of the spacecraft. Then we'll add the FLT-200 fuel tank with a Terrier liquid fuel engine to form the orbital maneuvering system. We will attach on the side two small .625 liquid fuel engines and the Juno basic jet engine and a couple of air intakes in order to form the atmospheric flying system, the AFS. This will allow you to fly your aircraft, your spacecraft, back to the landing, back to your landing site, no matter where you drop out of orbit. We'll add a couple of retractable landing gears onto those, uh, onto those engine pods, as well as one on the nose in order to give it solid landing gear. The retractable landing gear is the best option for this. It can take quite quite a bit more of a beating than the non-retractable versions. We don't need to try and uh, line it up with the center of gravity, at least the rear ones, because we don't plan on taking this off from the runway. Then we'll activate the center of gravity and center of lift indicators to begin building our wings. If you've gone to the moon a couple of times, moon and Minmus, then you should be able to have get. Then you should be able to use these. Uh, these uh, uh, delta wings. They produce a bit more lift and look a little better than the other options for building a space plane. Uh, we'll be careful to be sure that the center of lift is behind the center of gravity and will drain the fuel from the o orbital maneuvering system to ensure that it is still stable at landing. Generally uh, it is good to drain the fuel to test to make sure that it's still stable because if it is stable when it is full and stable when it is empty then it will usually be stable even if you don't use all of your fuel while in flight. We'll use this the one of our guidance fins that we generally use for rockets for a vertical stabilizer as well as add control surfaces to the wings then we'll add two RCS tanks onto the back and some RCS nozzles. We'll turn off the center of lift indicator and position our RCS nozzles around the center of gravity. We're going to use the single nozzle RCS ports in order to build a incredibly simple uh, RCS system that will make it easy to fly the space plane while around the space station using RCS. We'll add two to each side, one under the wing, one over the wing, two on the top and two on the bottom in order to ensure that we have enough control over the space plane when we have RCS activated. And we'll add and we got to make sure that they are lined up all as close to the center of gravity as possible. Finally, we will add our docking port to the top right behind the pilot command pod and two solar panels. We will then switch to the vehicle assembly building using the uh, switch editor button up in the top left-hand corner. We will build the launch vehicle you in two variants one which uses the main sail engine which will eventually become the workhorse for your space program as soon as you unlock it and one that uses the skipper engine very little will actually change between the two vehicles but the skipper engine will require that small SRBs be attached in order to get the vehicle off the pad and on its way into orbit the main sail engine has enough thrust on its own to get itself off the pad and into space the biggest thing with the vehicle is that it requires large wings to make sure that the center of lift that the 
is, is to make sure that the center of lift is behind the center of mass while you're on the rocket itself in order to keep it stable. If you design your launch vehicle correctly, you should be able to punch your crew orbit transport vehicle into a high and long suborbital trajectory that will be easy for your OMS to kick into, into a safe orbit. The second spacecraft we're going to design is going to look somewhat similar to a Soyuz uh, at launch with a few design differences. It does continue, just like the previous one, it does use three the three crew style capsule, Fostock style capsule, with two radial parachutes put on top, a small gyroscope added to the top attachment node, in top with a docking port, an FLT 200 fuel tank, two small RCS tanks, and two 1x6 solar panels, a Terra engine, and once again, this time with the four way nozzles, we will add our RCS as close to the center of gravity as possible. This is crew or the crew orbit transport vehicle too. For the launch vehicle, I'll actually leave that up to you. But I will show you my own design. Just remember to add your fair add your fairing, and if you have to have it unlocked, I recommend adding a launch abort system. But come on, comment in the link KSP forum post, and show or show me on Facebook. My my Facebook page is linked in the description of what you come up with for this vehicle if you have these parts. I'd love to see your creativity. Let's begin designing our space station. The space station we're going to design is going to be able to house six Kerbals. It must carry a science research station module and have enough docking ports for up to four spacecraft. It's going to have solar panels, plenty of electric charge, and an antenna to transmit the science we farm from the space station. We're then going to look at our space station and decide what parts can be launched separately in order to save weight. For, the ve for this vehicle, I am going to launch the main station module with the power and antenna, as well as carry four docking ports, three of which will be used for orbital, for orbital vehicles. Then the science experiment module will be transported separately to the station and carry a majority of the batteries and a single extra docking port for the orbital vehicles or station expansion.
By now, I have full confidence that you are capable of putting your vehicles into orbit. I recommend putting it, it to your space stations in a little bit of a higher orbit than your standard parking orbit. My standard parking orbit is 100 kilometers, so I tend to put my space stations at about 125 kilometers. But it is up to you. Next, you're going to want to design a launch vehicle for any additional modules that you decided to launch separately. I'm going to leave it up to you to design those, those launch vehicles. I'm just going to advise that you make sure that the upper stage, whatever stage you're going to rendezvous with, has RCS ports so that way you can use them to dock your module to the space station.
Next, in order to rendezvous your spacecraft together, you're going to want to launch your space at first into a, your standard parking orbit. You're going to then want to look up and see uh, if your target is ahead of you or behind you in in its orbit, where the orbits are kind of like a race around a, a track. If it is ahead of you, you're going to want to set your periapsis to equal the uh, apoap. Equal the orbit of your target vehicle and your apoapsis to be 25 to 50 kilometers higher than your target With this arrangement it will take your spacecraft a little more time to complete its orbit than the target and your target will be able to catch up If it's behind the target have your spacecraft in an orbit where your air apoapsis is equal to the target's orbit and your periapsis is 25 to 50 kilometers lower than your target's orbit this way your spacecraft takes less time to complete an orbit and you will catch up with your target quicker. Keep your eye on the closest approach indicator, the orange and purple indicators on your orbit. And when it looks like you're going to swap from getting closer each orbit to getting further away, begin to burn either prograde or retrograde so that way they get as close as possible. At this point, it is good to check your ascending and descending nodes to ensure that you are on the same orbital plane, just like what we did when we went to, went to Minmus. Then, use your, then, using your engines and make those corrections, just like, we, just like Minmus again. Then we'll try to make some minor adjustments to bring our closest approach into under 500 meters, or around 0.5 kilometers. Then as we approach, We'll make certain our nav ball is recording our speed and direction of travel according to our target. It may have, a, it may have changed automatically when you get closer to your target, but I keep it in orbit mode for most of the flight until I get within 500 meters of the target. You can click on the speedometer to change it from orbit, surface, and target mode. Once you are within 500 meters, kill all speed relative to your target. Then, find the pink target indicator on the nav ball. It should basically be a circle with a dot at the center, and burned so that you begin approaching the station at less than 5 meters a second. Once you are within 100 meters of the station, stop again. Right click on the engine to shut it down and use your RCS thrusters to guide it in the rest of the way in. Before you dock, point your space station to either normal or anti-normal. You can switch to your space station using the square brackets. And this will ensure that you can, that you can uh, lock onto your target's docking port without having, having it drift in it while, as it orbits. Point your vehicle normal or anti-normal depending on which docking port you've decided to attach this module to. Using the I, J, K, L, and H and N keys, slowly line up your docking ports and bring them together. Congratulations on docking and the assembly of your first space station. Now you can use those same techniques to bring, to bring some crew up to the space station using either one of the crew orbit transport vehicles you have access to. Put your scientists in the science bay, gather some science, and begin turning, out, turning that data into raw science that will allow you to unlock new parts.
Now that you know how to use these techniques to bring crew up to the space station using either the crew orbit transport, table, transport vehicles, it is good to show you how to bring them back down. Using crew, or crew orbit transport vehicle 2 is the, the same as every other spacecraft that we have launched. Burn retrograde until your spacecraft crosses the atmosphere to a point where you decide it is safe. Detach the orbital maneuvering system. Drift down until you are at a safe altitude and deploy your parachute. But with the crew orbit transport vehicle 1, it is a little different. You're going to want to time warp till you are around 90 degrees from your chosen landing site. I recommend the KSC. It has one of the longest runaway, runways and it has close proximity to the island air, airfield that you can use as a backup in case you overshoot. Burn retrograde until your tra trajectory is showing a projected impact just south of this island. Then face prograde and use with your belly facing down. While re-entering the atmosphere, try to keep your nose pointed up so you bleed off as much speed as possible until you have gotten below 25 kilometers. Then your space plane then have your space plane point just above the pro prograde marker to continue to slow down. Keep the marker just below the horizon so that way you're descending but not too rapidly. Activate your engines once you are below 10 kilometers. Deactivate your or orbital maneuvering system so just the jets are firing and then fly yourself back to the runway. At the KSC, the vehicle should glide well enough as at slow speeds, allowing you to land with less than 50 meters a second. Well within the limits of the retractable landing gear, congrats on safely landing your first s orbital flight space plane. Thank you once again for watching. 
I've gained a lot of subscribers in the past few weeks, and I'm excited to watch the channel grow. Sadly, I must admit that there is only one more episode that I will be making of this tutorial se series, but I am working on a big project that I hope to release in the next couple of weeks. It is taking quite a bit of research, and I can't wait to show you all what I've learned. That video project is the history and the future of winged spacecraft. Next week, we'll be taking, we'll finally be taking one small step for one small step and one giant leap for Kerbal Kind. Once again, I ask that you check out some of my social media links in the description. And if you uh, want, want, if you'd like to have a Kerbal named after you, to have special access to certain Discord rooms on my server, and to help me achieve my goals of becoming an astronaut. Support me on Patreon. Every penny I earn there goes directly towards my education. Thank you again for watching. I can't wait to see you all next time. Remember, the sky isn't the limit, only your imagination. Welcome back to This Week in Space News. This week I wanted to just highlight a uh, very important event. The Na NASA conducts the SLS booster test for future Artemis missions. Uh, for the new space launch system, uh, NASA is reusing some of the old space shuttle uh, solid rocket boosters. But uh, they did not have enough fuel for, for the flight that they needed, so they had to add a fifth section where, where the space shuttle had four section boosters. So the company involved, Northrop Grumman, has been running tests to ensure that the new boosters will work with the five section configuration. NASA is simultaneously making progress on assembling and manufacturing the solid rocket boosters for the first three Artemis missions and looking ahead towards missions beyond the initial moon landing, said John Honeycutt, the SLS program ma manager at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. Uh, I'm, I'm real excited about this. Uh, this is uh, proving the concept that the, space that the um, SLS boosters are, are going to work rather well for the Artemis mission, and it's another step closer towards us uh, getting returning crew to the surface of the moon. Thank you for joining me on this week's Space News.